Um, because the students will be popping in and we will, I think we're going to need some time to be creating today, which I love the sessions where we create and learn and, and make something that's useful. So boys and girls, oh, we just welcomed Isla, Isla. Hi, Isla. Nice to see you. So if we all have a sheet of paper, that's great. We're going to put it aside and use this a little bit later on. So Karina is going to talk to us today about planting seeds and getting plant seeds ready to be going outside. I am sure that some of your parents were outside planting this weekend. I know in our house it was a it's always a big weekend for planting. Katie has a brand new gorgeous to die for garden that her husband and son built for her for Mother's Day. So beautiful. And I was really lucky because I'm not a gardener for sure, but my husband looked after our backyard. So it's the, it's the time where we're, where we're seeing the bees and we're seeing the pollen and, and we're seeing all of that magic in nature happen around us. So Karine is going to talk to us a little bit about what we can do to use some recycled materials to create plant pots, planting pots. Give our little seedlings a head start. So over to you, Corrine. Thank you so much, Mally, and uh, welcome everybody to Royal Botanical Gardens. But before we actually do our activity, I just want to sort of remind us a little bit about, you know, plants and, and first of all, also where we are in relation. So I'm going to switch over and eat. You should see. I, mean, I, I know that we've got people probably from all over Canada, including Vancouver and Kelowna, maybe, maybe even people in Alberta or, or the Northwest Territories or Yukon or Nunavut. We'll have people from Ontario. But this is where I am. I'm right here in southwestern Ontario, very close to Lake Ontario. And some of you may already know this. Um, we are, there's Niagara Falls right there. There's Toronto. And by the way, Ottawa is up there, way up there. They had sunny weather yesterday, and we were clouded in rain. But that wasn't bad because our garden really liked that, and so did our plants. So, so here, Katie, we can just get you to unmute, uh, mute, and unmute just because your sound is sounding very strange on my end. Okay. Um, let me see where I am. Hold on. Uh, okay. It started when you started sharing. Oh, is that right? How is that? A little bit better? No. Maybe share and unshare and see if that fixes okay. it. Unshare and then reshare. I don't know what happened. It sounded like you were a robot. Ah. <laughs> Not good. There, I'm resharing. Okay. No, is that a little better? It's still happening, Kareem. Maybe you can... Um... I don't know, Katie. You might have to, what I would do is I would restart your computer. I know it's a pain, but let's do that just because it's very um, weird. Okay. Then we're going to have a problem because my computer will take about 15 minutes to get started. Okay, started. so you know what, I might, maybe we'll try moving Kareem to Zoom now. Okay. Or, 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 um, yeah. I'm wondering if it's your computer problem or if it's a... Uh, because I have, this is the first time somebody's ever said anything. No, it just happened. As soon as you shared your screen, something happened. So um, let me just share a Zoom link, and I'll bridge you over from Zoom. And see okay, I'll send you to my email address. Uh, yeah, I'll just send it to you through email. Yep, no worries. Okay, but, I'll, I'll, but I'll, you want me to come out of it. You want me to leave this meeting, though? Uh, yeah. And I'll just email you the Zoom link right now. Okay. And maybe the students can put in the chat uh, if they were planting or what they did on the long weekend. Like I told you that Katie was planting her seeds um, in her brand new garden. Uh, Mr. Bickley was had uh, gone to the nursery and picked up everything he needed for our vegetable garden and our garden. I know Kerrigan was out fishing. I saw her fish. Uh, Charlotte and Isaiah planted tomato and pepper seedlings. Yum. Oh, my two favorite summer vegetables. Actually, fruit and vegetables. So, did, so Charlotte, did you plant those indoors or outdoors? I've got the link, so I'm going to click on that. Perfect. So, if you disconnect from WebEx, just yeah. hang up with WebEx. Yeah, perfect. And I'll mail you Yes. Oh, just a minute. I have to find myself. Hold on. I've lost me. 
There we are. Okay. Sorry, boys and girls. It's so strange that that happened all of a sudden. Just craziness. Uh, so, um, my grandma has grow lights, and she grew them from seeds, and then she gave us a bunch, and we planted them in a veggie garden outside. Awesome. That's, so does your grandma do them all uh, winter long with her grow lights? Because that's pretty fascinating when you can do that. She starts everything in February. Good for her. Kerrigan helped your grandma plant potatoes and beans, and you made a fairy garden at, and, your, and your flower garden with mom yesterday. Awesome. That's great. That it's so nice to be able to get outside and do those things. And even if our friends can't come over and see them, we are still being able to enjoy nature outside. Oh, here they come. And Katie's going to have to do her magic with the... Okay, how's that, Mally? Is it working? I don't know. Karine needs to speak. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, that's fixed it. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting. I'm going to send Tanisha an email. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> okay, so over to you, Karine. <laughs> Okay, so I only see you three. You don't see the kids. Right. I'm uh, going to chat over for you. If you go to chat, Corrine, I'll copy their messages right over to you. So you okay, can... okay. So for now, we'll, we'll, the, the, so you guys are my go-between. Okay. So yeah. let me just find the chat. There's the chat. Okay. All right. That's good. All right. So let's continue, everybody. So... This is Lake Ontario and Toronto's up here. Ottawa's way up there, but Royal Botanical Gardens, this one is just here, the Royal Botanical Gardens is this oasis of green right here. I'm gonna go a little bit closer there. There is a Royal Botanical Garden right there. And we have five gardens in Royal Botanical Gardens, but so we have one big one here. And what's really cool is in the summertime, this area right here, it's called Veggie Village, and there are about seven different gardens with vegetables. But you know what the other thing is? Is that not all of our gardens are just vegetables or just flowers. We actually have a lot of gardens that are a combination of both because those vegetables help the flowering plants, and the flowering plants help the vegetables because they attract pollinators, but they also help keep away some of those pesky insects. So we're going to be taking a look at our at, at what seeds need. So the first thing, and, and I know you guys know this, what are some of those things that plants need in order to grow? And uh, I'm going to, you know, watch the chat to see what you guys say. I'll pay for it yeah. for you as soon as the kids post. Water, soil, carbon dioxide from Charlotte and Isaiah. And welcome back, Gabby. Good. Water, carbon dioxide, sunlight, absolutely. And without that water and carbon dioxide, those plants could not make their food. They don't need soil to make their food. They need the nutrients in the soil. And they also need that sunlight to give them that extra bit of energy. But they also need space. So plants need space, and that's, so in nature, we talked about this last week, how nature, animals, wind, water, um, self-exploding fire, those things help disperse the seeds. But when we're gardening, we do it ourselves. So for instance, our gardeners are going to be putting these trays together. They're going to be putting these plants in individual little places so that they have the space to grow, because eventually those plants are going to be then put in our garden. But they'll be put in the greenhouses for now, watered, given sunlight, given lots of carbon dioxide. There's probably close to 60,000 plants, seedlings right here, flowers and vegetables getting ready to go into the garden soon, if not already. 
Uh, I know that uh, we've, our gardens have been closed and we've just had sort of a few people working, but we're now bringing back those gardeners because these plants have to get into the ground. So when we think about seeds, are all seeds exactly the same? What do you think? Yeah, and uh, the sun they is say, important. No, to that they're energy. not. No, they're not exactly. So they're different. different. Lots of different ways. So seeds might be different colors. They might be different shapes. Um, these are bean seeds, and you know those bean seeds. They're all different types of beans. We've got scarlet runner beans here. We've got brown beans. We've got all sorts of different types of beans. We've got seeds that make our food. So pumpkin, peas, nasturtium, rice, wild rice, chocolate, and then right below that chocolate are little tiny seeds, little tiny vanilla seeds. Let's see if I can show them to you because they are very, very small. You'll have to focus, but give it a chance to focus. There we go, those little tiny black things, those are the vanilla seeds. And then finally, we've got tree seeds. So these are seeds that come from trees over here. So seeds are very different, but what's interesting is that all seeds are the same ultimately because those seeds start from the same place. So in order for them to start to germinate or start to grow, what is it that those seeds need? Yeah, they were tiny, weren't they, Gabby? Absolutely. Charlotte and I say see water. That's right. Yep, absolutely. They need water. Anything else they might need? Sun. And that sun is for the warmth. It's for, because it can be sunny in the winter, but there are no seeds growing. So that sun has to be warm. It has to provide that warmth so it can warm the ground. And then those seeds, between the water and that warmth, then they're going to start to grow. Some seeds will need light as well, not just the warmth of the sunlight, sun, but light. And, yes, definitely space. You can see by these sprouts here that uh, they're probably not going to do very much, but those are sprouts there. But I've actually got some. So I'm going to just show this to you, parts of a seed. So there are sort of four main parts. We've got the seed coat, and that's the outside of the seed, and that's what protects the seed. From a coconut all the way to those tiny little vanilla, they all have a seed coat that protects them. And that has to be sort of broken or sort of the water has to get in there somehow. And once that does, that's going to help swell the food stores or the endosperm, and then eventually that little seedling will start to grow. So I've actually got some seedlings here of some zucchini that I've been starting. So here they are. I'm going to bring them a little closer. And I've also got some lupins. So here's my, here's one of my zucchini. Here we go. Here's one of my zucchini. There it is. But there, there's the seed coat right there. And you see, as things are growing, it's pushing that away. And so I'm going to just do this because I've already got lots of zucchini. So there it is. Oh, this one was having a bit of a hard time, I can tell. And then I'm going to open it up. Because inside there will be, let's just see, no, it's a little bit sad. Yeah, it's a little bit sad because it's, it's not doing that well. Here, let me see if this one's better. Oh, this one might be a little bit better. Because inside here, there should be something there. Okay, come on, open up. Ah, there we go. So look at that. Let me just bring that a little bit closer. And here I am. Come a little bit closer. There. So inside that, there's the root right there. And there's the stem. Here, let me get my finer tweezers. So there's the stem right there. But look at this right here. 
What do you think that might be right there? So we've got the roots there, got the stem growing up. What do you think that is? I think President, can you say a leaf? A leaf, exactly, a leaf. And so what's happened is that eventually it will grow like this. And I'll just touch it, go back a little bit because this, that's one from the same pot. So, and you can see that the leaves start off. A lot of leaves start the same. These are called the first leaves or the cotyledons. These are the first leaves, and they look a lot alike. It's the ones that come after that help you decide what that plant is. So see, this is going to be my zucchini plant, and it's looking more like a zucchini plant. Look at my tomato over here. It's the same thing. My tomato plant, the first leaves look very similar to that zucchini, but these leaves look more like a tomato. The same thing with my kale. Same thing with my kale. They are the first leaves right there. That's going to give that plant the head start. But look at, there's my kale. That looks like kale. Corrine, uh, Charlotte and Isaiah, mm -hmm. during what is a true leaf? Ah, so a true leaf is the leaf that you, so here, okay, so these are what we call first leaves. So they're the very first one. So in that little zucchini seedling that I showed you, that's what this would become. And I'm going to show you a little video. You'll see that. But this is a true leaf. So this is the leaf that actually, because these will disappear. This is just to give that plant that head start. Okay, start making food now. Okay, because it's using the endosperm, it's using, it's using this, so it's using the inside to make the food. Okay, so let me see if I can, let me see if I can find that one that I had with the leaf. Uh, there. Okay, so I'm going to go down a little bit closer. So this part, the inside this part right here, so here, let me just, this part right here, that's the endosperm, that's the food, and that's what's giving that little seedling the energy to grow the roots, the stem, and the leaves, the first leaves. Once those leaves are grown, this will be finished, there'll be none of this left, and that first leaf will be the one that makes the food for the plant. So when you look at your seedlings, when they start to grow, they're going to look a lot the same. They're going to look very similar to each other. It's these leaves that will tell you for sure what you've got. So if you can't remember, that's one way to do that. Okay, one way to look. All right. So let's take a look at, um, let's take a look at a little video of some seeds growing. So I want you to, to look at this to see what is going to come first. So I want you to think about this. What do you think is going to come out of these little bean seeds, these mung bean seeds first? What do you think? It looks like they're still seeding. That's okay. I, oh, I, someone I, said roots, and uh, Rael said roots, and Gabby said a. Okay, so let's find out. Let's find out. So watch carefully. I'm going to stop it when we see something come down. Oops, I just gave you a hint. Aha, look what is the first thing. It is, and you were right if you said roots, Rael. Good job. And I'm, you know, and, and the thing is, why are those roots so important? Why do the roots need to be first? Why do 
think roots need to be first. They're thinking they're, oh, that Charlotte and Isaiah say they get the water. That's right. They get the water, which is really important, and the nutrients from the soil. But there's something else that the roots do. I want you to imagine if there was a great big wind, what would happen to those seedlings if there was no roots? That's right. They hold them down. They secure them in place. That's right. So these roots are really important. If those roots weren't there, those seedlings would just go. So those roots have a really important job. Okay, let's take a look at the next part that comes. So watch this big guy. I know there's going to be a little thing coming up here. Don't worry about him. Just watch this nice big guy right here. So watch him. Okay, keep watching. Watch this one right here. Oh, look at that, look at that. Okay, so what is this part of the plant? And the stem, exactly. So it's taking that water and nutrients up the stem because eventually it's going to pass them on to the what? What's this part right here that might be? Leaf. Leaf, exactly, the leaf. Now, the thing that's important is that that plant, this little bean plant, is getting its food from this part right here. This is the endosperm. But once those first leaves come out, then those leaves will be the ones that make the food to begin with, getting ready for those true leaves afterwards. Okay, now the other one I want to show you, the other video I want to show you is another one about how these plants move and how important sunlight is. So I'm hoping you can see this. This is this is a cool corn video. So watch these little corn seedlings right here. So someone turn the light on and watch what happens. So keep watching. Keep watching. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit. They keep watching. They're going to turn the light off. See what happens when they turn the light off. Uh, so this is, they've done this. They've done time-lapse photography, so they've made it go really fast. But this is a really cool thing when, it, when you think about how those plants, how those plants move and, and stuff like that. So I wanted to share that with you. So those plants need that sunlight, they need the water, they need the nutrients, and we're going to zip through there. So there's the plant there. But when we're planting seeds, different seeds go into the soil at different depths. You can't plant a lettuce or carrot or broccoli seed down deep like you would a bean seed. Those, because those smaller seeds don't have as much food storage as those bigger seeds do. So the smaller the seed, the closer to the top of the soil. But the other thing is these seeds, they actually need light. So they need the light to help them grow, which is kind of interesting. Uh, they also need the water, but they need the light that will help them sort of start to germinate. So we're going to do two things today. We're going to make a little seed pot like this, but we're also going to make, or at least I'm going to show you how to make, and the instructions will be on your resource page, how to make a seed cake, which is really useful for small seeds like lettuce and carrots. So I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you my document camera, which is where I'm going to be doing my work. 
So the first thing I'm going to show you very quickly is I'm going to show you how to make a seed cake. Serene, um, Charlotte and Isaiah said it's hard to plant carrots and lettuce. I know it is because when you get the seeds are so small. So let me show you this. Let me show you the carrot seeds. Look at there, the carrot seeds. I mean, if you try and grab some, you end up planting a whole bunch in one place. But this way, with the seed tape, you'll see that you can space those seeds out really well. And to know how to space those seeds out, you need to look at your planting directions that are on your seed packet. So I've got a whole bunch of seeds here. And I've got, when I look at my seed packet, so there's my carrot, okay? And I look at my seed packet, and at the bottom of my, right in the middle of my seed packet, and I'll go a little bit closer, you can see, okay, so that's the row spacing, six to eight inches, and plant spacing, two inches, but look at planting depth, how deep they go in the soil only a quarter inch and that's not much at all so two inches apart so what we're going to do is i'm going to use my marker i'm going to go back here and i'm just going to mark so actually i'm going to fold this so this is just a piece of paper towel that i've cut and i'm going to fold it in half so it's about two inches across or 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 a about five centimeters across. I'm just going to fold it in half like this. Okay, so I can see the middle. And then I'm going to mark two inches. Because that will tell me approximately where I have to put something. Then I'm going to take some goopy stuff, some paste. And all this is is flour. So it's about a a, a, a heaping teaspoon of flour, and then I just add water very slowly until it gets to be sort of this sort of gluey consistency. And then I add a little bit of red food coloring, so it's easier for me to see. I take this paste with a tooth with a little paintbrush, and then what I do is I go dot, dot, dot. Dot, you need to get a little bit more. Dot, dot, like that. And then what I do is I take my seeds, my carrot seeds. Now, sometimes I find it easier to just sort of put my finger on it. And there's one seed. I've got one seed right there. And I'm going to, oops, I'm going to drop that in that little dot right there. In you go. And then I'm going to get another seed. Sometimes you might put two in there, and that's fine. Two's okay. Yeah, because maybe one didn't work okay. And then there's another one. There, ready for the next. See, yeah, you see my seeds are? And then I'll do another one. Yeah. And I'll do one more. Okay. Whoops, that's too many seeds. Too many seeds. Go away. Okay. So now I'm going to fold this over, and I'm going to pack it. And you can see where my seeds are. So my seeds are right there. But the other thing you always have to remember to do is label. Label your seed tape. So that's an easy thing you can do. And you can use long pieces of paper towel. So all I've done, and I'll just stop sharing for a second so you can see what I'm talking about. So I've just taken my paper towel, and I've just taken one piece. I've cut this into three, so there's three pieces, and I've made three seed tapes. Or you could make a really long one. You can also do it with toilet paper, too. It's a little bit trickier because that's depending on the type of toilet paper you have. But you could do it with toilet paper as well. So that is a seed tape right there. And when you put this in the garden, you don't want to put it in now. It might be a little bit too chilly. You want to make sure that it's, that like next week you could probably put carrots in. You could probably put the carrots in without any problem. Because you want it to be warm. They're a warm weather vegetable. 
So you want to put this on the ground, and when you do this, you just literally want to sprinkle, just sprinkle a little bit of soil on top of that. And it would be the same thing if you planted carrots in your garden. You make a little tiny, little tiny row with your finger, put those seeds in, and then sprinkle soil on top. The other thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have a great big, heavy, um, big water uh, bucket putting on those. When you've got little seeds like that, it's a good idea to use a spritzer because those little seeds won't sort of be blown away by that water. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is now we're going to make a seed pot. Now these would be good for things like other t vegetables that need to go in their own spot, things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, uh, zucchini, uh, watermelon, pumpkin. You can start them all in a seed pot like this. And this, like there are some people that will start seeds in a little peat pot like this. That works too. Some people will start seeds in these little pots. And you can start them like that. And then I've also, got, as I said, shown you my tomatoes that I've got in a little pot like this. So we've got lots of ways. And by the way, I also have these I made out of newspaper. So we've got these here as well. Okay, so you can see how big they are. All right, so I'm going to make this. So I hope you've got your paper, and I'm going to share this. So I'm going to switch over so we can. Let's have everybody go get their piece of paper. Yep, yep, absolutely. That'll give me time to set up. And if you want to get a pen or a pencil, you can do that too, because I'm just going to get you to write A, B, C, D on your paper so that when we're talking about things, you'll know what we're talking about. So. You guys let me know. Let me just see if I can get this light a little better because it's just. Maybe in the chat, let uh, Kareem know when you guys are ready, when you have your paper and you're ready to go. And let sometimes, Kareen know to start folding. And sometimes, Kareen, it's okay with the light off. We've been finding that if the room, the room and the light is pretty good, then How's there's that? not there. Yeah. Is that okay? Uh-huh. Is that too dark? Because I, I tried to move the light a little bit so that here, let me just, let me just. Yeah, that's there. a little bit better. It, that's a bit better. There's not, that's better. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. So okay. Charlotte yeah, I and I are ready. Gabby's okay. ready. Raelle's ready. And Raelle, you're going to need to leave your, um, you're going to leave, need to leave yours in the pot for a little while until, I guess it's hard to plant. And Charlotte and Isaiah are going to make a bunch for bush beans. Oh, that's good. And you know what? Uh, scarlet runner beans are great because if you are where hummingbirds come, hummingbirds will come to scarlet runner beans. And scarlet runner beans are those great big beans. They're the ones that, mm. like the, the great big beans that I had. They are these great big beans. You know that's everything, Green. Oh, I have, I have. There, that's a scarlet runner bean. And then this, let me show you a regular white bean. Uh, oh, there, this is a regular, this is a regular green bean that you plant in your garden to get green beans. There, there's a regular green bean. See the difference? Mm hmm So. But we plant scarlet runner beans, so we plant scarlet runner beans and uh, morning glories in the same place. They can climb up together. Yeah, I have a little, I have a little, uh, I have a little box here of seeds. So I've got all my carrots together, beans, peas, so everything's together. Okay, are we ready? All right. Okay, so. What I'm going to get you to do, first thing, because it's going to be easier when we talk about the A corner or B corner. Can you put, a, so you've got your paper like this, so it's, it's, it's portrait, okay? So can you write the letter A and the letter B, okay? And you're going to do the same thing on the other side. You're going to put B that side, too, and you're going to put 
a dot size. So just make sure you got the, that, that way when we talk about a, b, we know what we're talking about. And then you're going to do the same thing. There's c, and there's d, and I've got c on that side, and I've got d on that side. Okay, just helps a little bit. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper in half like that. So D and A come together, C and B come together. Okay? Then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the middle and we're going to fold that in half, like that. So you should see A at the top. Don't worry, boys and girls, we're going to post this as well on the website. So. Okay, so I'm trying to make it slow, so I'll start again. So we fold it up, and then we fold it in half. And make sure these are really, like, push down on those lines, because you're going to need those lines later on. Okay, now this is a slightly trickier part. You're going to take this first part, you're going to take this one, this part, and you're going to open it up, and you're going to push that tip, you're going to push that so it goes like that, and you're going to fold that. Okay, so let me do it again. So you take this page, take the tip, push the tip down, okay? And we need to make sure that the middle line is equal to the middle line between A and yeah. D, right? Yeah. That's right. That's right. So your, so your middle line will be right here. It'll, it'll go right down. It all okay. lines up. Down. All right, so then we're going to close that one, okay, and we're going to do the same thing with this side. So we're going to lift it up and push this down. So you might, sometimes you have to, sometimes I find you have to sort of help that little triangle along, and you're going to push it down like that. Same thing, that middle line is going to follow right up like that. And, and and make sure your lines are there, okay? So we have, now what we're going to do is we're going to fold that back. So you should see D and C. Okay, so we've got a middle line right here. You can see when I make that shadow, there's a middle line. You need to know where that middle line is because that's important. You're going to take D and you're going to fold it over to that middle line. Okay, see how it goes? You're going to fold it over. So A is left right there. You don't touch A, you just touch B, D. And you're going to fold that. And make sure you push it down. Okay? You're going to do the same thing with C. You're going to put C over so that it goes next to D. There's the middle line, and you're going to fold that. Okay? You're going to fold this one again, so you're going to cover up D. But you're going to put it right in the middle. Okay, so make sure, whoop, make sure your page goes right, come on, you silly paper. Right. I mean, I think Michelle is a little lost. So okay. Michelle, can you clarify where you want Kareem to start from again? Can you show again from the beginning? Yeah, maybe not the beginning. Okay. Um, so, here, what we'll do is here. Just a minute. Yeah, I guess we could. Yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, so, so Michelle, you, you, you've got your paper open. 
I can't go any, I can't go any further. You got your paper open like this, okay? Fold your paper in half. Fold your paper. So once it goes this way, now it's going to go this way like you if you were making a book. Fold that in half. Okay, then you're going to, you're just going to take this piece right here, the one that says A on it, and you're going to open this up. And sometimes I find it helps if I keep my finger here. So if I keep my finger here right at the middle and I push this, whoops, push this so that now I have a triangle. So I've opened up that. I'm going to close that one. And now I'm going to do the same thing with these. So I'm going to put my finger here to help hold it. I'm going to bring this up and I'm going to push this part down so it goes, see, okay. So now you've got a big triangle. I'm going to open that one back up. So see, now it's solid. There's no, see where it's here? You had this little gap. There we are. So now it's solid. I'm going to take D, and there's a middle line right here. See that middle line? And I'm going to take D, and I'm going to fold my paper into the middle. And press that down. I'm going to fold C into the middle, and press it down. So now we have those two, okay, and A and B are just where they are. I'm going to take D again, and I'm going to fold it into the middle, and that's where we were for those of you who were starting. So I'm covering up D. D is, is invisible now. There's D gone. And I'm going to push that down. I'm going to do the same thing. Bring this one. Ah. There we go. Here. <laughs> Maybe the students can type in the chat if they are okay. okay. Michelle, I didn't see your last message. You must have sent it to just Katie. Gabby's got it. Okay, so I've got there's A and there's B, and we've got C and D hiding. I'm going to turn this over so, so that now we've got that same blank page right here. I'm going to bring B over to this center line right here. Here's our center line right there. I'm going to bring B over to that center line. And I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. A good, strong thing like that. Fold. I'm going to bring B, I mean A. I'm going to put A over here to the center line. 